Look what we got here. This is the mother load. Not morels, but oyster mushroom. It's mid-May here in Colorado. Spring is springing, everything is greening up. And today we're going foraging for a very sought after mushroom, the yellow morel. It's an amazing mushroom. We used to forage for it all the time back east and we had our little honey holes. I say that because they usually have a tendency to grow in the same area year after year. Reason being is that what we're harvesting here is really the fruit. So that's what's growing out of the ground. So hopefully we find some and I will show you. We'll cut the stem real low and next year the organism will grow another one. And that's the key is to basically get to know the areas, know where they grow and it becomes easier and easier. But you know what? We're up for the task because what else are we going to do on a beautiful spring day but to go foraging and looking for a new honey holes for yellow morales. So hey, come along. Should be a great time. Let's go foraging. First snake of the day. Take it easy here. He's sunning himself. Right there. Wow, he's it's nice. Good. He's beautiful. I'm glad he's going away from yeah. us. Pretty cool. I was just walking around this dead cottonwood and look at what I found right here. This is a beauty. First one of the day, and that's a big one. It's pretty lucky. We haven't been here but 10 minutes, so it is a good spot. So let's harvest it. Got my little mesh bag. So what you want to do, get the leaves off like that. You don't want to pull on it, obviously, because that would be a serious tragedy. So you want to cut it low, nice sharp knife. Right, right here, and uh, that's all she wrote. Look at this beautiful moral. That's a nice one. Nice and fat, plump. It's gonna be delicious. Couldn't be happier. Let's keep hunting. We're gonna put it in our little mesh bag here. The idea being is that you don't wanna put it in a plastic bag where it could sweat and it's gonna get damaged, but putting it in a little mesh bag like that is plenty of air and also the spores from the mushroom as I'm walking around are going to get dispersed and that's great because that's what we want so that next year we can come back and get some more so let's keep going it goes to show when there's one there's more so I found that first one right here behind me so what I've been doing because there's so many leaves I'm just using my hand to move the leaves very gently and I'm very careful where I'm stepping so I'm just kind of going like this, just moving the leaves. So I was in but a one step in front of that spot and I just went like this, started moving things and look at what I discovered. Another beauty right here. Look at that. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I was literally just kind of moving the leaves just like so. I might be able to find another one for you guys right here too, but it's just it goes to show. You just got to go slow. But uh, yeah, this is another one. For the bag, definitely a nice mature one. So let me get my little knife out. Number two, this is another beauty. Just gonna do that. A little chunkier, not as tall. Kind of a round moral here. But hey, we're not picky. It all tastes good. So let's see, we'll go even slower now that I I saw this, but that's pretty cool that this one was hiding literally just underneath the leaves. So you gotta go slow. You don't wanna go tripsing around and uh, flattening them all like pancakes. I'm starting to feel like a turkey. Turkeys do that. They scratch around looking for food. I'm looking for morals, so kind of similar. But I've done a lot right now. I went all around the tree and I haven't found any other one. So time to move on. We're gonna look for another tree like that or other good spots. Hopefully we'll find more, but within 10 minutes to find two, we're pretty lucky. That's all I gotta say. Nice little rub. You just never know what you're gonna find when you're walking in the woods. So, yeah, this deer tore it up. 
And I can smell some wild mint here. Here it is. Wild mint is just coming out, so it might be hard for you to tell, but it definitely smells very, very strong. Very, very strong. Uh, it's not mojito time, it's still a little early, so let's keep going. That's a toad. A big toad. Spring is such a great time to get outdoors. The flowers are blooming. Look at that. That's not pretty. Look by your feet, you got some yellow flowers. And then we got some of those prickly pear here. You gotta be careful walking around, not paying attention. That could hurt. There's a reason those mushrooms are so expensive. It's a lot of work to find them, not gonna lie. This is no walk in the park. Sure, when you find some, sometimes you hit the mother load. But it could be a while until you do, so, like gold panning. We'll find them. We're persistent, and we're hungry for some nice morales, so let's keep going. Out west, cottonwood trees are the best trees, really, to look around, because that's where the morales are gonna grow, because they do live off of some of those trees, they have some kind of relationship with them and that's why they're hard to grow in uh, captivity. It's hard to reproduce those same conditions. So uh, let's see what's over there. Looks like a good spot. Look what I found. Pretty interesting tip there on uh, Carbonaro. So somebody was hunting here. Now, this is pretty interesting. I've never actually seen a tip like this. Never used one of those myself. Seemed like there's a little hole here. So it might be that it was a fishing tip that they would attach something here. So they catch a fish, you know, that's a possibility. Usually they have prongs so the fish can't get away. So I have no idea, never seen it before. But definitely interesting. If we hadn't found those two morels earlier, these guys right here, I would think this area doesn't have a lot, but we're going downward in elevation. So we'll go back up and see if we can find some, because obviously we want to go back close to where we found some, but it's interesting. This air is getting a little drier. We'll look around a little more, but uh, we're gonna head back up, see if we can find some more. So, hey, never know what you're gonna find. Very interesting. That's a nice elk rub. Taller than me. So, all kinds of critters around here. Found a nice deer rub earlier, but this is definitely an elk rub. I mean, he's rubbing to my chest here, so that's no deer. Definitely an elk. This looks promising. Big cottonwood down. It's pretty green around it. Good amount of moisture. Gotta go slow. There's a lot of leaves. And that's the hard part with these cottonwoods that the color of the leaves are pretty similar to the color of the morale, so. And then, it could be under. So, definitely challenging. Look at the size of this rub. That's a big deer that did that. So. There's another one in there. Oh yeah. I thought that one was big. Yeah, they're all in here. I mean, the Holy cow. trees have been rubbed year after year. You can tell this one got broken. Huge rubs right here. I mean, the whole place has been decimated. Look at this. Look at that. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Look what we found. The mother load of oyster mushroom. Sure, it's not a morel, but this is quite a nice bonus. I love to fry these up. It's one of my favorite mushroom, especially next to a steak. This is gonna be awesome. So let me harvest it and uh, show you how easy it is. But this is a heck of a clump. It's actually stuck in the tree here. So let me get my pocket knife out. 
and uh, we'll start cutting. I'm gonna hack away. This little branch is stuck in here. Man, and it's perfect too. Sometimes the oyster mushrooms will be a little dried out, but this right here is basically just the way you want it. Man. I love oyster mushrooms in a stir fry with oyster mm. sauce. Yeah. And my mouth that. is watering right now just thinking about it. I'm gonna try to cut the bottom so I can get the whole clump and show you. Mm. Man, oh man, we're lucky. Woohoo! Look at this. This is the mother load of oyster. You know it's oyster because you look under, see you have those nice lamellas. That's classic oyster mushroom. And all these are in great shape. A lot of times they'll be eaten up by bugs. And we got to them first, that's all I gotta say. Sure, there's a couple little guys in there, but that's nothing really. Look at that. Wow. We're gonna make some steaks out of those. This might be the nicest clump I've ever seen. So I feel pretty lucky right now. Booyah. I was just coming this way and I stepped right next to this little guy, little rattlesnake. Here he goes. And uh, yeah, he's not even rattling. He's just kind of easing off. Sneaky little guy. Almost gave me a heart attack. So moral of the story, no pun intended, is to walk slow, look around, and just remember not to step on the rattlesnake like I almost did. That was a close one. Really close. I was like this close. So it's after lunch. I'm gonna try a new area. It looks beautiful. A little brush here. I think it'll be better. So let's see what happens. Look what I found on that trunk. There's a few oyster mushrooms. They're not big, but those are good eating size. So, surgery here. Let's see what we got. Oh, they're kind of anchored in a weird way, but here we go. Look at that. Nice oyster mushrooms. So, those are great eating. Frying these up. It'll be awesome. That's a great size. They're really tender at that size. So uh, on our way back to the car, I don't think we'll find any more morale, but guess what? Found a bunch of these and that's pretty awesome. It's a good cancellation price. And just the fact that we found our first two morals here in Colorado, pretty awesome. Uh, we never know, we might find one by the truck. I thought it was game over and I just saw these, so go to show. Never know. So look at our haul. Beautiful oysters. And then we got these two that we found at the beginning. Nice morels. Nice yellow morels. I thought after finding these that it was going to be a banner day. I thought we were in the hunting business here. I thought we were going to find a bunch of these. But obviously, it didn't turn out. We walked a lot. We looked everywhere. We still couldn't find more. All I can think is that we're a little late to the party. I know some people have been here, but I think we might be just past the peak. So that's why they're in a lot. At least that's my theory. So next year, we're going to start a little sooner. See what happens. And guess what? We still got plenty for dinner. So we're going to bring these home. We're going to show you how to process them and we're gonna turn them into a heck of a meal. So we'll see you in the kitchen. What we decided to do with these mushrooms is use them as a side for some elk steaks, but not any kind of elk steaks. We're using the back strap of a bull that I shot opening day archery last fall here in Colorado. And that bull hadn't been running yet. It's some of the best meat we have ever had. So we're pretty excited. 
since these mushrooms are pretty special, why not use a special cut to go along with it? So let me show you how we're gonna process them. Super easy. So if you've never done it, you know, nothing to it. So those are the two morels. We'll start with these. So we're just gonna cut the, you know, the dark looking stuff here. Because we wanna keep it fresh in the bottom, can be a little, not as good, you know, just a little tougher. Now we're gonna cut these in half. See what we got on the inside. Sometimes you can have little critters. Now, this looks pretty good. That's what it should look like. If you have a good eating moral, that's what it would be. Nice open cavity that goes into the stem. I say that because they're actually false morels. So if you open it up like I just did, and it looks like this, you got yourself a toxic mushroom. You definitely don't want to eat it. This is definitely very important to know because some people might just mistake this mushroom for a real morale and they could get sick. So that's just one of the you know, very basic thing about morales. And let's see on this one too. Should be the same. Ideally, it should be open and hollow. And it is. It's just curvy, you know, but it's the same. It's just a curved up one. It was hiding under the leaves. So instead of growing straight up, it grew sideways, as you can see. But nah, it's in the fine shape. So next step, we're gonna just rinse them a little bit, get some of the dirt off. So what we want to do, just a little bit of water. Make sure there's not a lot of debris on these, so they're in pretty good shape. But there's a couple little black spots. So the next step, you don't want the morals to absorb too much water here. So it does help to just dry them out a little bit. So I'm just using a salad spinner here. I'm just gonna spin them around, spin around a few times. It's just to get rid of that excess moisture quick. And around they go. And just like that, they're a lot drier. Look at that, it's barely any moisture. So for a recipe here, we're gonna saute them and we're gonna put them on top of our steaks. So, sure it looks pretty like this, but just for the sake of adding a few more pieces, I'm just gonna cut them up in quarters. So that's what they look like. Nice and processed, cleaned up a little bit. Now we're gonna do the same with the oyster mushroom. So next to our steak, we're gonna have a side of oyster mushroom. This is gonna be phenomenal. Let me show you what we're gonna do here. Is for this recipe, we're gonna try to use the smaller ones. They're a little bit more tender. We're gonna saute them. So this is the perfect size, really, for oyster mushroom. That's the way I like them, just like that. You don't want too much of the stem because it can be a little tough. So this works, and we're gonna cut them up too a little bit. Little side note here. This is how you know you got a real oyster mushroom. See those lamellas, those little gills, they come all the way down into the stem. So you don't have a nice white long stem and then the gills, they come all the way down, just like this. That's what an oyster mushroom look like. So just a little side note, in case you were wondering, never gone through those. So we got enough mushroom cut up here for a recipe. We've got about two cups. We're just gonna rinse them, pan dry again, and we'll be ready to fry them up. Now, these mushrooms are pretty clean. Sometimes you'll get some that are a lot dirtier and you might have to use a little paper towel to just kind of clean them up. But again, these are in good shape. So, just gonna spin them. So we get them all prepped up. We're ready to get cooking. Got the beautiful morels and some nice oyster mushroom. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Allison because she's really the real chef in the family. Me, I'm just the prepper. So let's get cooking. So the main ingredient of our dinner tonight are these two beautiful elk steaks from Stefan's Archery Elk, like he just told you. We have them marinating in a phenomenal marinade. We prepared it earlier. Didn't get to film it, but we're definitely gonna put the recipe down in the description box. So if you want the best marinade for any red meat steak. Just look there, you know where to find it. On top of that elk, we're putting the morels. We really want to taste the flavor because these morels are known for their phenomenal nutty flavor. And 
I'm just going to prepare them very simple in just some butter, salt and pepper so we can really taste the great flavor. And then the oyster mushrooms we're going to do in an oyster sauce recipe, but we're not just going to do oyster sauce. I have a phenomenal recipe that makes these things taste great and you're going to see it in just a minute. So let's get cooking. I have a tablespoon of minced garlic. We're gonna brown that up. The garlic is nice and fragrant, so we're adding the oyster mushrooms in. Already smells delicious. Next step, I have two tablespoons of the oyster sauce and one tablespoon of soy sauce mixed together. Pouring that in. Now in this dish, I have one teaspoon of brown sugar and half a teaspoon of ground ginger. And we're gonna add that. And on top of that, I have a quarter of a cup of broth bouillon broth, and I'm pouring that on, on top. Now as you can see, our sauce is bubbling, so that means it's time to add our cornstarch mixture. So what I have here is two tablespoons of water with a teaspoon of cornstarch, and I'm just gonna gently mix that in. And this is gonna serve to thicken up the sauce. So our oyster mushrooms are about ready. There's just one more step that you'll see at the end. Right now, I'm just gonna set those aside because we have some beautiful elk steaks to cook up and our morels. So we have our cast iron pan heating up, ready to take on those elk steak. And we also have some coconut oil heating up in our saute pan for our morels. And it should be about hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our morels a little bit of salt and pepper, and we're not gonna add the butter until they're almost done because we don't want the butter to burn. As soon as it gets hot, we're gonna throw these babies in. Might be hot enough already. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's good. So we're starting them in this coconut oil. Very simple. We wanna taste the morels like we said, so we're not gonna do a ton of spice or sauce. Just gonna add a little bit of salt. and pepper. So the key to cooking a really good elk steak, you never want to cook them all the way through in the pan. You always want to let them sit for about 10 minutes before you eat them because that way it keeps all the juices inside and it'll finish cooking on the plate. So they'll be nice and moist and perfectly medium rare. Now the last step for our oyster mushrooms is to add a little bit of sesame oil after you take it off the heat and before you serve, you're just going to sprinkle some sesame oil on top, mix that in, and that's going to give it some really nice flavor. And these are ready to serve.
Well, look at this. How lucky are we? I feel pretty blessed. Not only because we have all this great food here, but because I'm married to a heck of a chef to be able to cook up such amazing meals with things we catch. So without further ado, let's dig in. But it looks amazing. That's darn sure. So it's really fit for a king and a queen here, this meal. It's uh, unbelievable. Now let's see what we got for the steak. That's just the way we like it. Medium rare. Look at that. Cooked to perfection. My goodness. Melts in your mouth. Hmm. Just amazing. Morale. Eat this guy right here. This is a really special mushroom. Wow. Cooked to perfection. Should not be rubbery. Should just melt in your mouth. It's got that nutty flavor. Really hard to describe if you've never had it. But all I gotta say, if you never had morels, you have to try it. It is that good. And I gotta add, it always tastes a little sweeter when you get it yourself than go and get it at a restaurant or at a supermarket. But when you cook it yourself, find it in the woods, you can't beat it. You just can't beat it. And now the oyster mushroom, cooked this way, can't go wrong either. Wow. The flavors just come together. Unbelievable. Hey, what an amazing meal. It was delicious to the last bite. And hopefully, we're inspiring you to get outdoors because that's really the goal of our channel here on Cash and Dinner. It's just to show you how anybody can do this. We just went, did a little research, figured out where those morales would be, obviously where odds are higher. And sure enough, we found some and we're able to find those bonus oyster mushrooms, which are also phenomenal. But I gotta say, those morels are something else. They're so flavorful and just such an amazing mushroom that we're really excited about an upcoming adventure that's coming up. Because here in Colorado, we have burned morels. And those, when you find them, and they usually come after a fire and we get plenty of those, you can actually get into them real thick and get five to 10 pounds in no time flat. So after eating these, now we're really excited about that adventure. So that's coming up soon and we have plenty more coming your way. So hey, hope to catch you next time on your next adventure of catching dinner. Until then, we're out. Ah! See ya.